right so we were talking about the steady state conduction and more specifically we were on this topic heat transfer through extended surfaces we derived the temperature distributions for few types of boundary conditions in total you have four types of boundary condition on the fin tip okay just to revise and give you a review those four boundary conditions include isothermal where you specify the temperature then you have adiabatic tip it means you don't have any kind of uh, heat transfer through the tip or you might have put some kind of insulation over there then you may see that treating the uh, this fin tip as a control surface you can say whatever is being achieved by conduction from the left side that is being convected away by the by the tip okay so that you can say it is a convective boundary condition and the finally which is uh, which gives you the more uh, simplest relationship for temperature distribution it was just like e raised to power minus mx something like exponential function uh, that is coming from the infinite length assumption okay but the problem is where should we treat the fin as an infinite fin right this is this is the question now i told you there are four conditions the final one was infinite length fin okay and now we are at a point where we want to discuss what should be the extent of the length where you can treat the fin length to be infinity obviously infinity you can't achieve it but in reality what does that mean infinity means that there should be a point beyond which there is no point of having more length right why do you want to increase the length so that you can have more surface area so that you can have more effective convective heat transfer okay but there would be a point beyond which there would be no heat transfer at all right so that saturation kind of thing there is always a saturation in systems okay so i would try to explain uh, that point through that example this is this is the sole uh, objective to discuss this exa example uh, given in your book you can see that as well but i would be more interested in discussing point number 2 okay the first is quite straightforward you can do it your own on your own but uh, let me read the statement first a very long rod rod 5 mm in diameter has one end maintained at 100 degree centigrade now one end maintained at 100 degree centigrade it is it is talking about the base you can see that in the uh, next statement the surface of the rod is exposed to ambient air at 25 degree centigrade with a convection heat heat transfer coefficient of 100 watt per meter square per kelvin okay all the informations are given determine the temperature distribution along rods constructed from pure copper 2024 aluminum alloy and type aisi 316 stainless steel all these materials are given to you and what you need to extract from this information is is the thermal conductivity you remember thermal conductivity there are four factors h p k and ac the cross sectional area p is the perimeter h is the convective coefficient okay and k is the thermal conductivity so you, you just need to know the thermal conductivity from this information you can get that from the tables given in your book what are the corresponding heat losses from the rods now it is very uh, evident from the very first line of the of this statement a very long rod it means he is talking about what infinitely long rod okay so it means out of four boundary conditions you need to take the fourth one and all the information is given we have derived those expressions in the last lecture what is the temperature distribution for an infinitely long rod what is the heat transfer rate okay now you can just plug in the values and get the answer this is quite straightforward so i would move on to the second part estimate how long the rods must be for the assumption of infinite length i'm sorry for that spelling mistake for the assumption of infinite length to yield an accurate estimate of the heat losses obviously you can't achieve the infinite length in reality but there would be a point beyond which there is no effect of increase uh, increasing length on the heat transfer rate we want to discuss that okay so this is the point i want to highlight 
So, <clears throat> I want to talk about this point. It means if you has this fin. this is the base and this is the fin tip let's see this as length and we say that it is a very long rod in finite length obviously it can't be in finite that is quite clear now we want to see we want to find out length beyond which you can say that the fin would behave as if adiabatic conditions have been applied on the fin tip okay this is the point just just try to translate something physical into mathematics what is the purpose you have an infinitely long rod but the point is that you can't achieve that infinite length for example i say that in a certain situation you have a length of 2 meter of the fin okay but once i plot temperature distribution i say that beyond length of 1.5 meter temperature remains let's say almost equal to t infinity so would there be any heat transfer from the fin to the fin tip then not at all right so it means that length of 0.5 meter that is something which is the waste of material that is something which is weight of waste of the cost or money right so this is the point we want to find out that length beyond which there is no heat transfer you understand that okay so now what does that mean that means we can compare two things we can compare two things what what was the heat transfer rate for it means we are talking about comparison of two boundary conditions one for adiabatic and the other one for l approaches infinity right so heat transfer rate for adiabatic condition was i would write it down straight away that heat transfer rate for adiabatic was hp kac under root theta b tangent hyperbolic ml and for this case that was qf equals hp kac theta b right these are the two heat transfer rates now just look at that what is the additional factor in the upper condition tangent hyperbolic ml right Uh, remember this is not tangent h ml this is tangent hyperbolic remember that okay so if i say this factor becomes 1 this would be equal to this thing you understand that now what does that mean if i say that this thing needs to be very close to 1 needs to be very close to 1 so just to you can say uh, from an engineering perspective to give some kind of space to to the mathematical quantity i would not take it exactly equal to 1 i would say okay fine if tangent hyperbolic ml equals 0.99 or maybe greater than equal to 0.99 then this expression would be equal to this expression isn't it we can take that approximation this is quite justified okay we don't put uh, we don't need to put exactly one although from a mathematical point of view you can do it but it it always gives a good approximation so more appropriately you can use this quantity so i would say that if tangent hyperbolic ml greater than equal to 0.99 and then what you can say ml should be greater than equal to tangent hyperbolic inverse 0.99 right so once you solve it that length needs to be equal to this quantity i think that becomes 
divided by m okay if you take the tangent hyperbolic inverse of 0.99 that would become uh this thing so you can say by the way what was m you remember that hp kac under root remember that this was m okay so if length goes beyond this point it means that length would be useless there would be no heat transfer from that length okay so you can say if your length is going beyond this point you can treat the fin to be of infinite length you understand that and what does that mean that this is the length which should be used for effective heat transfer you don't need to waste your money you don't need to waste your cost uh, or let's say resources material <coughs> sorry you are talking about this point you want to manage uh, compare those two conditions that that's what the question is about okay i repeat my point is look at the statement estimate how long the rods must be for the assumption of infinite length to yield an accurate estimate of the heat loss now what does that mean that mathematically you have said okay fine you have infinite length but can you achieve that length in reality not at all okay now what you can see is that beyond a certain length there would be no heat transfer why because obviously there is a thermal resistance associated with the fin you would see that the temperature at the base that would be the highest and as you move along the fin the temperature goes down and the difference between the fin temperature and t infinity that becomes smaller that's why heat transfer rate also uh, de decreases as you move along the fin okay i explained those things in the last lecture now if you see that the temperature is going like this now there would be a point beyond which the temperature difference between two quantities fin uh, fin temperature and t infinity that would become very small it means beyond a certain length the heat transfer would almost be minimal you understand that point so it means beyond a certain length some portion of the length would behave as if it is adiabatic do you understand that right so that is why if you compare those two quantities that okay fine let's compare those those two quantities one relation is coming from l approaches infinity and the other relation is coming from adiabatic fin tip condition let's compare them and you can see that there is just one factor which is multiple in this case that is tangent hyperbolic angle if that factor becomes very close to 1 those two relations would be equal you understand that so you can compare them now if it means if they are equal they would produce the same kind of heat transfer rate and you can find out the extent of the length beyond which you can say that the, this length is kind of infinity you can put that tangent hyperbolic ml greater than equal to 0.99 or exactly equal to 1 then you would you would be getting more rigid relation so don't go for that as an engineer you should be able to like move around so this is tangent hyperbolic ml greater than 0.99 or equal to 0.99 so it would give you a good approximation that if l is greater than 2.65 over m it means there would be no heat transfer beyond this point so ideally you should have length of the fin equal to this relationship okay ideally you should have relation uh, fin length equal to almost this relationship 2.65 divided by m and what is that m this is under root hp over kac right so through this example i just wanted to discuss this thing agreed any other question okay so now i would discuss few parameters regarding the performance of the fin you have already received your assignment number 1 yes. 
okay just last few questions uh, they are from this topic okay you would be using this information that's why i extended that deadline we are uh, we missed yesterday's class so that is why i just extended that deadline and you you need to submit it on tuesday inshallah okay i would not be available next week so you have to submit it to uh, rehan sir okay please go to his office i have already informed him so now we are going to talk about the fin performance how you can quantify that fin as an engineer you always look at the things performance quantifying uh, you can say quantifying this performance of any system by two parameters generally effectiveness and efficiency okay now i would define the fin effectiveness and then fin efficiency that fin effectiveness is basically represented as mathematically this is qf over h a cross section at the base divided by theta b now this qf is basically heat transfer rate from fin fin surface and this point gives the heat transfer rate at the base if fin is not present isn't it this is h sorry a cross section at the base and theta b was what this is temperature difference you remember that okay so you can say effectiveness is what effectiveness can be quantified effectiveness can be quantified by comparing two things that what is the heat transfer rate when the fin is present and what was the heat transfer rate when the fin is not present okay you are comparing those two parameters the upper one which is basically heat transfer rate when the fin is present the lower one when the fin is not present okay and just look at this parameter this is very important to understand that this is cross sectional area basically this is the cross sectional area of the fin at the base you can say that okay now the point is this quantity in practice this quantity needs to be greater than 2 if you want to install a fin on some system you should say that effectiveness it means the heat transfer rate should be double should be double the amount if the heat transfer rate is not present okay it should not it should have been exceeded by twice you can say that so ideally sorry in in practice this is this is the quantity generally you install the fin when you try to transfer the heat through gases why because for gases heat transfer convection convective coefficient is very small as compared to liquids convective coefficient for gases is very small and generally fins are used on those sides where you have natural convection for forced convection you don't need to go for fins right so these are the two practical conditions where you use fins you can think of using fins okay one effectiveness should be greater than 2 you should use the fin on a site where gas is being used for transfer of heat okay if i say this is a small fin this is the fin which is coming out of this wall now what is the heat transfer rate when the fin is present right 
you can find that out. Now, if I remove it, now what is the heat transfer rate from this cross sectional area if the pin is not present? That's what I wanted to compare. You understand that? So, you need to install the pin on the gaseous side, on the side where the gas is being used, and obviously, you would have pin on the side where natural convection is basically occurring. Okay? So, why natural convection? Why? Because putting some kind of forcing for convective heat transfer, you can always increase H. You can always increase, increase H. Sorry? Obviously, there would be a limit. Obviously, there would be a limit. But practically, you can say there are, I think, in major, uh, most of the applications, you don't need to install uh, fins where you are using forcing. Generally, you can handle that. Okay? So, this is something where, where uh, it happens all the time in engineering, in engineering applications. And you can see in your car systems, if you have some kind of fins, you would see that those fins are kept on a site where heat transfer is occurring from the, through the air. It is not on a site where the heat transfer is occurring through water. Okay? What is the reason? Why? Because you need to put the fin on a site where H is less. You understand that? So, this is about the fin effectiveness. Right. Let me e explain this fin efficiency. You would describe that fin efficiency with the actual heat transfer rate <coughs> divided by the maximum heat transfer rate which could have been possible. This is what you do to define efficiency. Okay, output over input. Output is what which is which you get out of some system, and input is something which is the maximum thing which you can have achieved. But obviously there are losses in any in any mechanical system or electrical system, so efficiency would decrease, right? So this this is the actual heat transfer rate and this is something which is the ideal heat transfer rate okay now remember what is the difference between those two conditions this quantity remains the same in both the parameters qf this remains the same this this is the difference here you were using cross sectional area at the base only okay and this is in that effectiveness parameter that quantity describes the heat transfer rate when the fin is not present but this is the quantity which represents the heat transfer rate when the fin is present and this is something which may give you the maximum heat transfer rate. Now look at that. What is the heat transfer rate which can be maximum in this condition? That can be let's say area of the fin divided by theta b. Now why, why I call it like this? This is something for convective heat transfer rate. I, I write it down once again. Q dot max. By the way, all of these quantities are Q dot. You understand that. Okay. So, for convection, I would say these are the parameters which should have been used. H, you can't affect it. A, again, you have some limitation on that. Obviously, this would be the maximum heat transfer if complete fin remains at temperature TB. If you go along the fin, temperature drops down, isn't it? What is the maximum temperature? That is at the base, right? So, you can say that the maximum temperature difference would be TB minus T infinity. And as you go along the fin, that temperature drops. It means that difference drops. It means that Q dot drops. So, what would be the maximum heat transfer? What would be the ideal heat transfer rate? That could have been achieved if the whole fin remains at base temperature. 
you understand that so that is why i would put theta b over there to define the maximum or ideal or although it is it is not possible why because heat transfer uh, through that fin would have to face some kind of thermal resistance as well from the fin it it has got some material right so it has to face that thermal resistance so it there would be some kind of losses as well but but what what's the point we are just trying to define an ideal quantity to find out efficiency okay so eta f is equal to q f over q max and what is q max this is the ideal heat transfer rate if the fin is present and that ideal heat transfer rate can be obtained by what by putting the whole fin at a temperature at tb okay so you should remember this thing so if for example if if in any numerical problem or let's say in any application you are given a boundary condition that okay find out the heat transfer uh, sorry efficiency of a fin and you can treat that fin as if it is infinitely long you just need to see the table put the value of qf over there or the expression and then divided by q max okay you would find out what is the efficiency so, uh, this is only for yes exactly for convective heat. why because through the fin what we are trying to do mm. we are trying to increase the heat transfer by which mechanism convection okay that's why we are increasing the surface area that conduction would happen why because we have increased the surface area and the basic objective was to do what we increase the surface area to do, to achieve what to achieve maximum convective heat transfer isn't it why because all around the fin there would be fluid there would be some kind of gas or liquid okay you want to extract the heat from the system and uh, you can say and transfer it to the surrounding but the point is what is the mechanism mechanism is the convective heat transfer obviously that heat would be transferred from the base to the fin by a conduction but what's the mechanism to transfer that heat to the surrounding that is convection okay and that's where we are interested in we can send the heat from the system to the surrounding by a convective heat transfer and how can you achieve that maximum heat transfer rate by convection if you put the whole fin at temperature tv you understood that okay how what and yes the whole part would be conduction that's why it is ideal obviously it is not real it is it is something which is ideal that that is what you can achieve ideally not in reality okay any other question no okay right the, these are the theoretical point of views okay in practice what you can do is you have some assumptions people have worked it out that let's say instead of having so much boundary condition in industry what you do is you always apply some kind of correction factors and use the simplest relationships okay in industry what you do is you always apply some kind of corrections to certain relations with simple with some boundary conditions right and you can extend the result to the other cases i would explain it now my point is you have already seen that beyond a certain length heat transfer rate would become minimal it means beyond a certain length of the fin heat transfer there would be no heat transfer and the fin would act as an adiabatic surface now the adiabatic surface case was just one case now people have proposed different corrections like for example if i say in this case qf was m tangent hyperbolic ml and by the way what was that m i have already explained it this was hp kac theta b okay now 
this relationship can be used for the other boundary conditions now i am just talking about the practical point of view what what you follow in industrial applications this relationship can be used for other uh, boundary conditions like for the all other three boundary conditions obviously some with some kind of error if instead of using l you use c for other boundary conditions for rest of the three boundary conditions instead of using l you use a corrected length i would say this lc is a corrected length okay and what that corrected length is that corrected length is equal to l plus d by 4 this is again an approximation l plus d by 4 now this d is for what kind of fin where you have circular cross sectional area okay and if you have a rectangular kind of thing then obviously instead of radi uh, radius or diameter you would have thickness okay so in that case this would become okay for this kind of fin these are the two corrections you can use those corrections now without getting yourself involved into the critical uh, sorry complex relationship mathematic relationships cos hyperbolic tangent hyperbolic and all that stuff what you can do is you can always do, use this expression you can always use this correction and treating the fin as an adiabatic tip right so this is a correction which you need to incorporate you understand that instead of using l just use the corrected length but if you are already having the adiabatic condition you don't need to go for corrected length then okay this this this, this relationship you should use only for the rest of the three boundary condition not the adiabatic one you understand that so and similarly the corresponding efficiency would be tangent hyperbolic mlc divided by mlc now this is what you could have achieved uh, sorry this is what the actual heat transfer rate this represents right hpkac would be divided by the lower one okay you can put the values and you can see that finally you would come up with this expression so here you would also see that lc would be used okay just plug in the values for the adiabatic tip or this relationship in the efficiency relation and you would come up with this expression okay you just need to do one step plug the values cancel out the common terms you would get this one now the point is fine you can do that all the time but in once you are on the field you might not have that much time to design a pen or you might not have calculator all the whole time in your pocket or let's say some kind of computer now what you can do is they always provide you with some charts right they would give you some kind of tables they would give you some kind of charts and they would tell you okay find out the values through this thing now you remember that i told you that those charts are in the form of dimensional parameters or non dimensional parameters non dimensional parameters you remember that buckingham pi theorem so non dimensional parameters are there you see these charts may be given to you instead of finding out that eta f
through the complex mathematical relationships you can simply look at this chart and you see this is a non dimensional parameter which you need to work out this corrected length raised to power 3 by 2 multiply by h divided by kap raised to power 1 by 2 and this is the ap quantity for different types of fins you can see that these are different types of fins okay so you can find out this parameter this non dimensional parameter find out the value of this non dimensional parameter for any particular fin and you can find out its efficiency through this chart the chart is given in your book you understand that any question these are something which are basically you can say practically what you do in the field okay so if you have any question you can ask for all the fin types lc is given how you can find out that corrected length it is always given this is for parabolic profile this is for rectangular kind of fin and this is kind of uh, i think pin fin or the the triangular one the conic type of shape okay any question right now the same instead of again uh, giving you the mathematical ideas or let me let me give you a mathematical idea about this one first and then i would explain this okay so i was talking about the other types of fins and we have uh, the annular fins i told you the ring type of structures around some cylindrical portion okay that ring type of structure around that cylindrical portion like for for example if you have this kind of cylinder you just put a ring over there right so this is something where as an example i can show you this this thing you can see this 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 figure so these are annular fins right and by the way you by by looking at this geometry you can see that we can talk about uh the temperature distribution within the fin in cylindrical coordinates it would be feasible to look at the cylindrical coordinates once we talk about the temperature distribution within those fins now these fins if i say obviously we have what parameter what are the cylindrical coordinates r theta z okay and dominant heat transfer would be in the radial direction isn't it now this radius the outer radius would be defining the fin tip the outer radius would be defining the fin tip and the inner radius at this point the base that would be defining the base okay now as you move from the base to the tip radius changes isn't it radius increases now if radius increases the cross sectional area of the fin would increase it means the cross sectional area of the fin that would not be constant in those types of fins now before this point we have been talking about those fins where cross sectional area was constant right now these are the fins where the cross sectional area is not constant okay so these types of fins we are going to talk about and these types of fins are basically annular fins they are known as annular fins okay and or you can say more appropriately to make it more general i would say that fin of non uniform cross sectional area okay 
now you remember we we talked talked about the distribution of the fins uh, sorry distribution of the temperature within the fin we derived that quantity okay you remember a small control volume there is some heat coming in through conduction there is some heat going out through convection and through conduction right so at one point in the in the discussion we had in the last lecture at one point i talked about only the constant cross sectional area fin and i disregarded the second term where we have d a c by d r something like that okay so that term was put equal to 0 why because we don't have any kind of variation in the cross sectional area with respect to r but in this case we have that okay so i would write down the relationship for uh, sorry the governing equation for temperature distribution if i say in this case cross sectional area would be equal to 2 pi rt i hope you understand what is the thickness the thickness of that ring okay that was that was the thickness t okay so i can write it down as the total sorry the final governing relationship you can see that we have already derived it plus 1 by r dt by dr minus 2h over kt t minus t infinity equals 0 you see this is the same form of heat equation the second order and is it linear or non linear it's a linear equation you don't have any any uh, multiple of any term as a function of temperature right all the coefficients are not a function of temperature okay so uh, either they are constants or they are function of some other parameter like r or anything else so that 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 defines that uh, this this uh, equation is linear this is second order obviously and now you need to define the governing equations in terms of radius now i have already told you that inner radius is at the base outer radius is at the fin tip okay now this type of equations are known as or i can if if i say that again instead of using that t i can use theta as well you remember we translated that t equation into the theta form okay so i can define it into that theta form and that theta form comes out to be d square theta by dr square plus 1 by r d theta by dr minus m square theta equals 0 right now this type of equations again just like the laplace equation this type of equations once you have this type of configuration they are known as modified bessel equations if you see this kind of pattern in any differential equation ordinary differential equation you would see it is of this type why do you define it why because they have all uh, the ordinary differential equations of this form would have certain similarity in their solution okay okay you can define uh, the generalized solution for all the ordinary differential equations of this form and that generalized uh, that solution would be the, would remain the same only the difference would be based upon the coefficient c1 c2 and all that anyways what is the order of this equation it's second order equation so how many coefficients of differentiation would be there to define those coefficients you need to have two boundary conditions one at the base obviously you would know the temperature at the base and the other one on the fin tip okay it means now you would define the fin tip boundary condition not as x at l as r equals r out you would say that r equals r out this is the boundary condition okay if i say that the flux let's say i i say that fin tip is uh 
एडियाबैटिक फॉर एग्जाम्पल सो आई वुड से डी टी बाई डी आर इक्वल जीरो यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट डी टी बाई डी एक्स इज इन दर्टीजियन फॉर्म डी टी बाई डी आर इज इन दिलेंड्रिकल फॉर्म सो डी टी बाई डी आर इक्वल जीरो और इफ आई वॉन्ट टू डिस्क्राइब सम काइंड ऑफ टेम्परेचर ओवर देयर वट आई वुड से दैट टी एट आर इक्वल्स आर आउट और आर मैक्सिमम इक्वल्स लेट से ट्वेंटी डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड और ट्वेंटी फाइव डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड वट एवर ओके सो दीज काइंड ऑफ इक्वेजन्स आर नोन एज मॉडिफाइड बेसल इक्वेजन्स दे हैव जनरलाइज सोल्यूशन ऑफ दिस फॉर्म Now, what does that mean? It means this is a parameter i naught, which is a function of m r. Now, we just be very careful. This is a parameter i naught, which is a function of m r. You already know what is m. Okay, I have defined it. This was two h over k t under root, isn't it? Then, this is a parameter which is a function of m r again, k naught. now this i not and k not these are known as modified zero order bessel functions of the first and second kind respectively now this is of the first kind and this is of the second kind these are just the names okay these are just the names of those two functions i not is a function of mr you know what is m you know what is r k not is again a function of mr and both of these two are basically bessel functions first one i not is the first kind is of the first kind and k not is of the second kind and you can see the values for different types of let's say if 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 you say that some something is function of x if you put the value of x you can value of you can find out the value of that function now there is one appendix given in your book i think appendix b you can check that in your book may it be b or c whatever so you can find out the values of those functions against any value of mr you can find out the values of i not and k not the bessel functions of the first and the second kind you can find out those values for any mr you can plug in the value and get those two uh, i not and k not okay now how can you can find out c1 and c2 by putting the boundary condition okay again i would not go into that detail you know what is the rest of the mathematical stuff you can plug in those boundary conditions okay now you know how to find out the bessel functions at least generally they are found out numerically and they can be used in different fields engineering fields or fields related to the physics if you are talking about electromagnetic waves if you are talking about let's say uh, rotating fluids okay you would have those kind of ordinary differential equations and you can keep looking at the bessel functions okay wherever you find out some engineering applications happening in cylindrical coordinates you are going to define it in cylindrical coordinates the governing equation you can come up with uh, those bessel functions or bessel equations okay so it is quite normal thing to deal with those bessel equations and bessel functions if you are working in cylindrical coordinates okay so different types of applications are already there i have told told you electromagnetics rotating fluids uh, maybe some other fields as well I, so rest of the things you know that you need to plug in the boundary conditions and you can find out c1 and c2 right but i would be more interested in looking at the practical point of view you can you know that how to use those boundary conditions so i would leave the rest of the mathematical stuff to you guys there are just few equations you don't need to derive it you just need to look at the application you should you should be able to see 
you should be able to find out the value of i not and k not from those tables that's what i require from your side okay you should be able to find out value of mr see that value of mr in that table find out the corresponding uh, value of i not and k not and use those values but my point is instead of getting yourself involved with the whole mathematical stuff you can just look at this chart okay this is very easy quite easy again similarly you need to find out this parameter you need to find out this parameter corrected length h k a p okay and in this case a p would be defined like this corrected length would be defined like this and there would be a quantity which is r2c it means you are talking about correction of the outer radius okay and why do you use those kind of corrections for other boundary conditions remember that not for the adiabatic one for adiabatic one you don't need to why because you you are going to compare rest of the boundary conditions with the adiabatic one you can say that you are going to use the relations for the adiabatic boundary condition for what kind of boundary conditions for the other boundary conditions okay let's say for example if you have convective heat transfer at the fin tip and you don't want to uh, or let's say you do not you do not remember you are in a situation where you do not remember what was the exactly heat transfer rate at that time but you remember what was the heat transfer rate for adiabatic you can always shift to the adiabatic condition by putting some kind of corrections okay so for adiabatic conditions these are the charts you introduce some kind of correction and get the result is that clear okay so my point is you should have a fair idea of the mathematics and if you have some kind of problem a genuine problem you don't remember it not in the exam okay in the field i am talking about something which which would happen let's say after one and a half year or let's say after that okay so my point is you should be able to look at the mathematics and at the same time you should be able to look at those charts okay any question no question okay now in reality you don't have only one fin you would have more than one fin you remember the few uh, slide uh, few pictures which i I have shown you at the very start of this topic. There were few applications, engineering pictures from the few applications where you have multiple fins. Okay, so what you can see is you would have multiple fins on the plane wall, or let's say in some cylindrical portions as well. Right. So in that case, you would be talking about the overall surface efficiency. we have been talking about surface efficiency of only one fin but if we have more than one fin we need to look at the efficiency of the total surface right now what we can do in that case overall surface efficiency let's define it what was the efficiency by the way that is something the actual heat transfer rate divided by the ideal heat transfer rate the maximum heat transfer rate which you can have so i would represent that overall efficiency as eta not divided by q total q total means the total heat transfer rate by the fins okay 
and how i am going to define that q total i would define i would calculate heat transfer rate from one fin and i would multiply it by the number of fins simple as that to get a good approximation we can we can use that okay i would just multiply uh, calculate heat transfer rate from one fin and i would just multiply it with number of fins so and that should be divided by q max which can be possible by that array of fin okay so obviously in q max we would use that relationship that would be there so this is the total area this is the total area and this could have been achieved if the all the fin all the fin surfaces they are at temperature tb okay you see i am using at now in effectiveness uh, in effectiveness parameter there was ac b right in efficiency it was a fin again but you were using theta b okay and here it is at now my point is how can you define this at at is the area where the convection is taking place at is the area where is where the convection is taking place now see that fin array see that convection is taking place on this area isn't it if i if i talk about the fin array i am going to talk about the overall surface efficiency remember that surface efficiency okay and in that surface efficiency i would include the base as well <laughs> why because i am talking about the fin array and it is installed on on the base earlier we were only talking about the fin efficiency now it is overall surface efficiency right so overall surface also includes that base area as well okay so so just look at this fin array let's say all of those shaded areas they are included in the total area used for convection okay all of those shaded areas now how can i write the total area i would say that this total area would include <coughs> area of the fin multiply by n the number of fins n is the number of fins plus the base area right plus the base area now how can i write down q total how can i write down q total i can write down that q total as let me write down this first and then i would explain it do you understand this expression how can i write down this sorry eta f this is q of fin divided by h a f theta b isn't it so i just multiply it with this quantity and this comes over there okay so q total would be equal to why because i want to associate this overall surface efficiency with efficiency of a single fin that's why we incorporate this parameter over there so q total can be written as q of one fin multiply by total number of fins plus this heat transfer from the base understood 
okay now i would write it down as if this q total equals i can i can make this h and theta b as a common i can take them out so h and theta b i would take it on the other side so i can write it down as n eta f a f and that a b the base area in the second expression i am talking about this one this i can write down as if it is a t minus n a f can i write it like them like this and this is being multiplied by theta b okay by simplifying this expression we can have h a total 1 minus n a f over a total 1 minus eta f theta b now see if i divide this quantity by h a total theta b i would have the total surface overall efficiency if i divide this quantity by h a total theta b i can have the overall surface efficiency you see if i divide it by this term i would be getting only this expression 1 minus n area of fin divided by total area 1 minus eta f so this is i am sorry this is not eta f this is eta not sorry instead of ab you can write it down from this point okay so if you know the efficiency of one fin and if you know the total area and the fin area you should be able to find out eta not now this expression is independent of any information regarding heat transfer rate theta b and all that stuff you just need to know the geometrical parameters and efficiency of one fin you understand that so this is this is the beauty of this simplification is that clear so now just just one more point you can also define that fin array as a thermal system thermal resistance system for example if you have this, these two fins let's say these two fins are there you see that on these sides they may be almost equal to t infinity right they may almost be just just by looking at that adiabatic condition and its mathematics and these two points would be at a temperature pb so i can say i can represent these two nodes at tb and at t infinity and i can say these are the two resistances okay these are the two resistances and by the way what are those resistances if you look at eta not that come out to be by the way if if i just represent this uh this fin resistance i can define it as a ratio of this theta b which is just uh corresponding to volume uh, that voltage difference divided by this current which is qt right 
if I write down this expression, I can say this RF would be equal to 1 over eta naught H A T from this expression. Just remember that from this expression, if I divide it by theta b, I would come up with this, this thing, eta naught a t h, eta naught a t h, okay. So this would be the total, you can say, uh, fin resistance anyways. So this fin resistance would be equal to this fin resistance i am sorry this this fin resistance is equal to 1 over eta naught h a t and this is the fin conduct conductance and this is also the fin conductance overall you can define the total resistance by this amount okay that's how you can define the thermal resistance of any fin so i finish this topic over there and that's where uh, we stop for your first session. Okay. By the way, one more thing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I just want to look at this thing. This is the fin resistance, and this resistance should be the convective resistance from this base. If you also include this fin, you have to include one more resistance. I repeat, this first resistance is of this fin. And also you need to include the convective resistance from this base. So this, this resistance was, second resistance was representing this base convection. Okay. And this third one would be representing this fin again. Okay. So this one I, I was talking about, this was the overall fin, right? So overall resistance. 